I'm Jolene Wynn, and this is the Porn Addict's Wife podcast, episode number 155, Retroactive Pain. I used to think of myself as the wife of a porn addict, but I do not think of myself that way anymore, and you don't have to either. In this podcast, I am going to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you can stop living your life around your husband's pornography addiction. I am going to teach you how to stop being the victim and how to conquer his pornography addiction, even if he never does. I'm Jolene Wynn. I am a certified life coach, and I am a member of the LDS faith and the wife of a former porn addict. And this is a podcast for the porn addict's wife. Hello, my ladies. How are you? I hope you guys are having a wonderful, beautiful day. It is beautiful here in North Carolina. Yesterday we had soccer and I almost screamed my voice out. (laughs) I love soccer. I played soccer all growing up and all through high school and it was my favorite sport besides swimming. And it may have even beat swimming a lot of times. And it was so fun to play. And I have three kids. Three of my kids are in soccer right now. Two of my my littlest ones, my five-year-old and my six-year-old, and then my boy who just turned 10. So um, I don't scream a lot in the little kids games, <laughs> but I've gotten very into the my son's games in his, you know, 10 and under league that he's in. And it is so fun to watch him. And I just love watching him play and I love yelling at him and I know that he can hear me. I can be very loud and (laughs) he's told me that he can hear me and I think I make Rob a little embarrassed, but it was so fun. I almost yelled myself hoarse and then I went and watched my nephew play and I screamed at him from the sidelines and he could hear me and it was the best. It was a great morning and then we went and watched, um, this really close family friend of ours, she is so talented. She's in high school and she is a junior in high school and she was in a play. And so we have gone the last couple of years that she's been in musical theater and gone to support her in her plays. And she did a great job at her play. We went to her play yesterday. My kids watched the whole thing and it was SpongeBob. Have you guys seen this musical? I didn't even know this was a thing. And I think maybe I didn't understand most of it because I never watched SpongeBob, but the whole time I was just a little confused because I don't really know the characters. Maybe for those of you who do know SpongeBob, it would have made more sense or been more funny. My kids thought it was funny and they had a great time. And of course, you know, this family friend of ours, she was amazing. She was just exceptional and very, very talented. And so it was fun to go and support her. But the whole time I was just like, I don't understand what's going on. (laughs) Maybe I need to watch this show in order to understand it. But I never watched some SpongeBob. So I just didn't understand some of the jokes, but that was okay. But we had a great, we had a great day. We had a really good week. Um, and I hope you guys are having a great, I think you guys are going to have a great week this week because today is Monday, May 1st, which means it's a new month, which means you get to decide all over again what you're going to be and what your month is going to look like. And I don't mean looking at your calendar, although I do have some dates for you to write down, but I don't mean looking at your calendar, but I mean actually taking a look at what is it that I want to become and how do I want to change things? Because it's a new day. It is a new minute. Whenever you're listening to this, it doesn't have to be Monday, May 1st of 2023. It can be another day. It doesn't matter. Every single moment is an opportunity for you to begin again. And sometimes the situations, the circumstances in our life make that a little bit easier. Um, I was actually talking to my daughter about this this week. I'll do another podcast on it. But I was talking to my daughter about this earlier this week. Um, She was mentioning how I've noticed a big change in her since we moved. We moved in the first, you know, end of January, beginning of February to a new house. And um, it's about 30 minutes away. So it's a new church. It's a new school. It's a new neighborhood. And when we shift our circumstances, it is easier for our brain to make changes in our behavior and the way that we think because it's already shifting habits. It's already aware that we need to make some adjustments in order to compensate for our new surroundings. So it's much easier to do so. So it makes it more natural if you want to decide, you know what, I want to spend more time outside. I want to be more outgoing. I actually want to start going to the gym. Like your brain sees that as an opportunity and is much more willing to start making adjustments and make changes than it does when it's already ingrained in your habits. It's much easier to do it when there's already change. However, 
Even if nothing else has changed in your life, I give you permission to start over right now. You can become a kinder person. You can become a more forgiving person right now today. And that can make things a little uncomfortable or at least a little bit different, especially when it involves another person. If you're interacting in a different way, if you decide, hey, I'm no longer going to gossip, right? Well, then if you've always been gossiping with a friend and she calls you and wants to gossip, it might be a little weird at first or a little uncomfortable when you say, oh, I'm not going to do that. Let's talk about something else. That might be a little bit strange at first. It might be a little bit difficult to navigate, but there's always that opportunity. So again, whether you're listening to this on Monday, May 1st, or whether you're listening to this a year later or whenever it is, it doesn't matter. Every single day, every moment that you have is a new opportunity. And I want to encourage you to take it and to decide on purpose who you're going to become. And if you love doing that, then I want to encourage you, ladies, here's the calendar part. You guys ready for the calendar? to mark your calendars. I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. The in-person retreat for this year is in October, and we are headed to the beach in North Carolina. We are going to Ocean Isle, North Carolina, and we are going in October, and I want you to come. I cannot wait to see who comes to this retreat. It is going to be so, so good. Okay, so mark the dates, October 19th to the 22nd, okay? And this will be opening up to all of my, it's already open to my clients and several of them have already booked their spots. There's only 14 spots and some of them are already taken, but um, it will open up to the rest of you guys in June. So one more month, you guys will have the opportunity to purchase and secure your spot for the in-person retreat. It is a three-day in-person coaching extravaganza, which is so fun. I am so excited. I already know I've had several people reach out to me who are not clients and say, I really hope there's spots left because I am in and I can't wait. I can't wait to see who comes. And that's what we're going to be focusing on is reinventing ourselves, re-identifying ourselves, choosing on purpose who we want to become, and then making a game plan of action to actually become that person. There is so much in-person coaching and a, a tons of one-on-one time with me. So if that is something that is appealing, to you, then I want to encourage you to mark it on your calendars, start saving your pennies right now. It's going to be $1,800 for those of you who are not clients. My clients get a discount and they already get to sign up. So if you know that you want to come and you want a discount, then come join my coaching program and then you'll get a discount on the in-person event and you'll be able to sign up before everybody else and make sure that you get a spot. So I wanted you guys to mark that on your calendar, let you know that that's coming up. Also, I have a free class coming up, a free webinar. I don't know what to call these things, a workshop, a class, a masterclass, a webinar. There's all of these, like I was talking to my coach the other day, and there's all of this psychology behind what you name these kinds of things. Did you know this? I didn't know this, but apparently there is. Because when you say things like masterclass, then people think, oh my gosh, that sounds so hard. When you say things like workshop, then people are like, wait a minute, am I doing something with my hands? And if you say something like a webinar, people are like, oh, I've been to a webinar a million times. There's no winning. I don't know what to call it. If I just call it a coaching call, then people are like, meh, what does that even mean? What is coaching? So there's no right thing to call it. So it's just what it is. (laughs) Okay, I am teaching something and I would love for you to come. That's how I'm going to phrase it, okay? On Monday, May 22nd, I am doing a webinar, class, master, whatever you want to call it, okay? That's what I'm doing, a coaching call. And the topic that I am going to be doing is called finding peace when your husband is untrustworthy. That's what I'm going to be talking about, how to find peace when your husband is untrustworthy. So that's that's the, the concept of the, of the call. It is a one-day event. So Monday, May 22nd at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can sign up right now on my website. If you go to jolenewin.com, there is a tab called Coach Week, and you can click on that link, and that will take you to the page. That will, from now on, always be updated with the next class, the next free call that I am doing. So if you want to come to a free call, if you want to see, okay, how on earth do I actually find peace? Because here's the thing is I've been doing all these master classes on trust and forgiveness and all of this stuff, and it's wonderful. And my clients are loving it and you guys are loving it. However, I know that there are so many of you that are like, I can't even think about trust right now. I just want to be able to get through my day. And this one is for you. (laughs) Okay. That's what I really want this to be is for those of you who don't know what the next step is and are trying to figure it out. This is for you. This is how to find internal peace, how to find peace within yourself, even if your husband is untrustworthy, even if he never changes, how on earth are we supposed to feel peaceful about it? 
that's what this is going to be about. So again, May 22nd at 11 a.m. Eastern, you can go to my website, jolenewin.com, go to the Coach Week tab, and you will be able to sign up. It's totally free, but go ahead and save your spot so that way you get access to the replay, even if you can't come live and invite a friend. So there you go. All right, ladies, let's dive into today's topic 10 minutes in. Sorry, I'm so long-winded. All right, I need to be better at this. Next time, I'm just going to cut to the chase, okay? I promise. Okay, ladies, let's talk today about retroactive pain. This is a concept that I, I have been dealing with a lot, and I deal with my clients a lot. And here's what it looks like. Practicality, right? Practically, practicality. Practically speaking, okay, this is what it looks like in real life, is when I have a client come to the call and say, I just found out something about my husband, and now I am basically rewriting everything that has already happened in our lives, right? I just found out that my husband has been looking at pornography for the last couple of years, and I found, or I found out that he looked at it on a certain trip that we went on. And now I look back at that trip and I feel differently about it, right? It's almost as if I'm experiencing pain retroactively. You guys with me on this? Now, here's, let me give you a personal example. So over the last couple of months, you guys know that my husband and I have been going through some stuff. Some stuff has come up and we've been dealing a lot with that. And this has been what's coming up for me is this idea of retroactive pain, which I am familiar with. This happened when I found out about specific instances of his pornography use or when he first initially told me. He told me after we've been married five or six years and all of a sudden I went back and I was like, oh my goodness, does that mean that this time I feel so dumb about this, right? Or when I found out about specific instances of when he watched pornography, then I felt very dumb. I felt very stupid. I felt sad for myself. I was, it was almost like I was feeling the pain retroactively, right? In that moment that I lived that experience, I didn't have pain because I didn't know what was going on. But then in the present, I'm learning about what's going on. And so I'm feeling pain about the past retroactively. You guys with me? So over the last couple of months, as I have learned stuff like this, the main thought that has been coming up for me is I feel so stupid. You guys ever thought this? You guys with me? (laughs) Okay. And I know that so many of you do this. I work with my clients on this a lot. Okay. I feel so stupid for who I was in that moment. I am feeling the pain retroactively. But here's what I wanna offer, is that it's not actually pain that I felt in the past. What my brain is doing is it is taking the story of what I now know, it is applying it to my past memories, and then I am feeling the pain currently, in the present, okay? I didn't feel the pain before, I have specific memories that he's talking about that I know where I was. I know what we were doing. In that moment, I didn't feel pain because I didn't know what was going on and I didn't have any thoughts about it, right? Now, knowing differently, having different thoughts about it, my thought is I feel so stupid for who I used to be. I feel so stupid for myself in that moment for feeling happy, for feeling positive, when I had no idea what was actually going on. You guys with me on this? Does this make sense? Hopefully you guys are with me, okay? Now here's, again, the point that I really wanna drive home for this is this is very tempting and very appealing. This is what our brain is using to validate our story. It, It wants to create the idea of where we were and what we were doing, and it wants to flood the memories of the past with information that we have now. And it feels really important to do so. One, because we feel so stupid for not knowing, right? Because we have a judgment that we should have known or that we shouldn't have felt positive when something like this was going on and we didn't know about it. But then also our brain wants to have all of that information. It wants to produce that emotion so that it validates the story that we're telling ourselves now. You guys with me on this? I get to feel this way because of all of the hurt that he created, okay? Now, what I want to offer, no, first, (laughs) first, I want to really drive home that you're not feeling pain from the past. What you're doing is feeling pain in your present about the past because of thoughts that you're thinking about it, okay? Again, it's not like you had felt pain in the past and now you're remembering it. That's not what happened. What happened is you didn't feel pain in the past and now you're taking your thoughts from the present and applying them to the past 
And all it's doing is rewriting the past into a less appealing story and creating more pain in the present, okay? Again, all it's doing is creating more pain for you to feel right now. And it feels really important and it feels really justified and it feels really responsible and it feels naive to not do this, right? You guys with me? It feels naive to just let the past already be written and start from here on out. It's very tempting to want to rewrite it, but I want you to question or I want to offer that you can question, what if I don't? What if I choose not to rewrite the past? What if I choose to let the past be done and written because it already is? And what if I just choose to what I'm going to do now? Now, I'm not saying that I'm perfect at this. There have been so many times where I am sitting and I have been processing all of that emotion. I am not saying that we ignore it. I am not saying that we pretend that it isn't happening. I'm not saying that you pretend or shove down these thoughts that come up about how you feel dumb for what happened before or in those instances, right? I am not saying any of that. That's shoving down the beach ball and ignoring everything, and we don't want to do that. But I'm saying we look at it, we accept it, we let the thought knock on the door, but we don't let it come in and stay. This is when you say, you know what? Maybe I do feel a little bit dumb, but maybe I also don't have to continue to believe that. Maybe I have the thought and I process the feeling, but maybe I don't choose to continue to perpetuate it. What if I don't need to rewrite the story? What if I can just process the stupidity that I feel now and then I move on and I don't have to keep thinking that and I don't have to keep bringing that in to my past? Because here's what's going to happen, ladies. The more you rewrite the past, the more pain it creates in the present and the more pain that you have in the present, the more difficult it's going to be to determine your future on purpose. If you need to, you can rewind that and listen to it again, okay? The more pain you have in the past or the more you rewrite your past, the more pain you create in the present. And the more pain you create in your present, the more difficult it's going to be to write your future intentionally, to create the life that you want to have. Because you're going to have an accumulation of pain that is not only rewriting your whole history, but also bringing it forward into the present. And the present is all we have, ladies. That's what we're experiencing, okay? And you're gonna take that with you into the future and continue to perpetuate that pattern. And if you continue to perpetuate that pattern, then your whole past always gets rewritten every minute of it. Are you guys with me? If you don't give yourself permission to let the past be done and to write the future however you wanna write it, then what you're gonna do is just repeat the cycle. This is why we feel like, oh, I thought I was doing well, but now I'm right back in it. I thought I was doing okay, but I keep having these same thoughts. They keep coming back over and over. That's because you're not actually rewriting things and you're not letting go of the past. One of the reasons we don't wanna let go of the past is because of all the things that we make it mean. We don't want to let go of the pain of the past because we feel like it invalidates our story. But this is so important, ladies. Listen to me. You do not need your story validated. Your story is valid right as it is because your feelings are valid just as they are, just as you experience them. You don't need to add to them. You don't need to keep rehashing the past and rewriting it in order to validate how you feel. Your feelings are valid. So just feel them. You don't need to tell the story. The only person that you are justifying your feelings to when you rewrite your past is yourself. That's it. It's a story that you're telling yourself inside your own head. Okay? And you might say it to a best friend and they might agree with you. Doesn't matter. Okay? You are trying to justify your feelings to yourself. And I give you permission to know that your feelings are justified simply because you feel them. But that doesn't mean that you have to keep them with you and you don't have to rewrite the past in order to have felt them. I don't need to rewrite the past in order to simply feel stupid. I can just feel stupid and it might not even make any sense because it's not like I have to feel stupid. It's not like I knew what was going on and it's not like I was supposed to. It's not like I missed cues. It's not like I was supposed to have known what was going on. This is simply a thought that's coming to my brain that's producing an emotion, and I can just sit and I can process it without rewriting the past in order to validate it currently. Does this make sense? Are you guys with me? So I want you guys to take a look. Where are you rewriting your past and creating retroactive pain in your life? And I want to give you permission to stop. Is it easy? No. Is it simple? Yes. You look at the thoughts. Now, step number one, ladies, is what I teach in my program over and over. Step number one, awareness. 
What is it that I'm thinking and feeling? Acceptance, that's step number two. Accept it without judging, without trying to make it worse, okay? Step number three, process the emotion. Whatever emotion it is that you're feeling, you sit and you feel it. If you don't know how to do that, I will teach you, okay? You sit and you process the feeling and that is what enables you to let it go. This is what enables you to actually let go of the pain that you've been carrying around, that emotional baggage from the past. When you learn how to process your emotions, that's actually what releases it so that you don't have it anymore. Step number four, you get to identify a new thought that you want to think. And this is a skill. This is There's so many tools that I teach in my program on how to do this, on how to identify the right one or, or how to choose a thought that works for you, right? But you get to decide, is this what I'm going to continue to believe, yes or no? Do I want to keep thinking this thought? Do I want to keep thinking the thought that I'm stupid? Or do I want to think something else? And if not, then let me choose something different. And then step number five is you get to retrain your brain. This is when you get to practice being in charge of your brain, being aware of what's going on in your brain, the processes that go on in your brain. And this is when you get to learn all the tools of how to actually rewire your brain, those neurological pathways, so that you don't have to keep repeating the pattern. This is how you change it. Ladies, if you are stuck in retroactive pain, then this is how you change it. And one of the biggest reasons why we do this is we want to validate our pain. But what I want to do, ladies, is share with you that this last week, I've been talking to my husband a lot. We've been dealing with, I've been dealing with a lot of retroactive pain, okay, over the last week. And I've been sat down, and the thing that made the biggest shift for me is I sat down and I said, all right, how do I want my story to look from now on? Think of it like a book, okay? I, it's like I've already written a book, and then I want, I'm trying to go back and rewrite it and I'm crossing out things, and I'm trying to add stuff in, and it's making it a mess. And what I want to offer instead is that you just let the part that's already written, just let it be written and have it be done, okay? And now everything else in front of you is a blank page. You've just got an indefinite number of blank pages left. How do you want to tell it? What's the rest of your story? Again, ladies, you are not the sum of your worst mistakes, and you are not the accumulation of the hardest things that have happened to you, okay? You are more than the porn addict's wife. That's not the only thing that you are. And if you identify yourself as that, if you keep yourself stuck in retroactive pain, then that's what you will become. That's who you will be. And if you want to be that person, go for it. But it's a pretty sucky place to be. And I know that because I've been there for a little bit, right? So I want to offer that you can change that. The next page is blank. How do you want to think about yourself? What is the story that you're going to write? How are you going to think about your husband? How do you tell his story? How do you tell, how do you write his character in your mind? How do you write your relationship in your mind? How are you writing about yourself in your mind and what's possible for you? That's what I want you to focus on. Your brain's going to want to focus on the past. It's going to want to bring it up. It thinks it's really important to keep with us. But the reason it thinks it's really important to keep that with you, that pain with you, is because it wants validation. It wants justification. It wants to say, see, I was hurt. He did this terrible thing to me, and it sucks, and we need to remember it, and we need to rewrite the past in order to make us the victim. Why? Because then it's not our fault, because then we get to feel sorry for ourselves. And that's a really appealing place to be. But self-pity doesn't get you anywhere. In fact, it keeps you stuck. Because when you're in self-pity, you have to be the victim, which means you can't go anywhere unless you have a hero. But ladies, I'm telling you, even if your husband changed and became your hero tomorrow, he can't get you out of self-pity. Why? Because self-pity is internally generated. Okay, so if you are stuck there being the victim in your own head, and it sounds really nice and really appealing and very true, I'm not saying that it's not. I'm not saying that you didn't hurt your feelings. I am not saying that you don't get to feel this way, but maybe we just process it and then you become your hero. Again, I've shared this so many times, but I remember my husband telling me that he was so sorry that he hurt me. And I said, you know what? Maybe this was years ago. I said, maybe that's okay. Because if you broke me, then maybe you can fix me. But it's not true. He couldn't fix me. First of all, I wasn't broken, which is what I tell my clients all the time. You're not broken. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just feeling feelings and you don't know how to feel them. That's all. Okay? And sometimes they suck. Okay? But all I was doing was I was just feeling emotion and I thought I was broken, but I wasn't. And it wasn't until I had this thought and it completely changed my life. 
I'm not broken. And if I am broken, I'm the only one that can break me. And if I can break me, then I can fix me. And that completely changed my life. Ladies, if you feel broken, it's just a feeling. And if you feel it, it means that you can process it and you can let it go. If you feel broken, you can fix you and I can teach you how. You do not need to stay stuck in retroactive pain. And if you feel yourself staying stuck there, then I want to encourage you to come work with me. I will help you figure this out. You can come to the webinar, come to that finding peace when your husband is untrustworthy. Come to that. I will teach you how to do this. I will show you the steps that you need to take in order to start retraining your brain and to get out of the pain that you're feeling. It's completely possible. And there is a much brighter future for you. And I see it. And I hope you guys start to see it too. All right, ladies, I love you so much. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll talk to you later. So take care. Hello, my lady. I wrote a book and I would love for you to read it. It's called The Not Enough Wife and you can get it on Amazon today. This book is for any woman who has ever felt like she wasn't enough, not enough as a wife or as a mom, if she didn't have Instagram worthy enough pictures, if she didn't throw Pinterest worthy parties, if she ever felt like she was not enough, this is the book for her and it's for you too. So go to Amazon today, go search up The Not Enough Wife by Jolene Wynn and grab a copy for yourself and for all the women in your life. I hope you love it and I can't wait to hear what you think.